What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Summer Career Mode. This is episode number 11. We start today's episode off with Fulham away at Craven Cottage in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Newly priced Premier League of course under Marco Silva last year. And we've got him again as well. That's our second and final game today's episode. Once again at Craven Cottage. Uh, that time's going to be in the league. I don't know why I wanted to start today's episode off like this. But um, it's it's just so interesting isn't it? Like when you, when you face a team like you know back to back. Or, you know, one and then one time and then there's another game against someone else and then you face them again in quick succession. There's something about that which, like, to me, I, I always feel it's, 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 it's really stupid, I know. But maybe there is something in this. Like, I always feel as though, like, if you if you win the first game against them, say you have got, like, we've got here a league game and a cup game. Or if you've got, like, a European tie, for example, like a quarterfinal, one comes one week, uh, midweek, and then the next comes the, the following week. I feel like when when you when you like win the first one like your your confidence and your belief that you can win again is always going to be so much higher than if you face them you know months in the future for example the way the league fixtures come out you know you face 19 teams in the premier league for example 19 uh, sorry yeah 19 teams um in the first half and the 19 teams in the second ordinarily unless there's major fixture rescheduling you know you, you'll face maybe one team in october you won't see them again until march for example you know there's a, there's a big gap there and it's it's harder to you know remind yourself you won the first game you can definitely win the second but when the game's coming quick succession there's something about that like even though you facing the same team unless they blow things up in January for example you, you just feel you've got way more of a chance of beating them again because it's fresh in your memory do you know what I mean and I don't know why I'm starting today's episode off like this but I was trying to translate that to, to life I've been having some interesting conversations with a friend of mine basically about the psyche of those that live with uh, clinical depression and uh, you know those that you know just just seem to do better in life I suppose in terms of their mental health and perhaps have never experienced depression and um, I guess obviously I, I put a tweet out not too long ago talking about how nowadays I don't really talk about my mental health like I used to but I still do have major depression I, I still do have major depressive disorder um, I'm on antidepressants I go to therapy um, you know I, I I still feel it. I just don't talk about it as much. And uh, I was I was trying to relate it to this kind of example. Like when when you've had it so recently, or when when uh, you know traumatic events or whatever else have happened so recently, when they're fresh in your mind, it's harder to kind of get away from that and then try and you know fixate on more positive thoughts and a more positive mindset. And for those that have you know just positive events happening in their life, it always seems to be the case where it's like you know. Um, you know, maybe your girlfriend gets pregnant and, and, and then you get engaged and, and then you buy a house like one after the other. You've got like this reference point of positivity that came before so recently that it's not hard to visualize it happening again in the future. And then through that visualization and manifestation, I, I don't truly believe in, in manifestation. I must be honest here, though I am becoming more open to the concept of it. It does seem to feel as though it's more likely that the more positive things will carry on happening. And it's quite similar, um, unfortunately, on the other side of the coin as well. When you've been going through those depressive moments or those negative moments, maybe you've lost your job and then, um, you know, through way of that, your income's suffered massively and you're struggling to pay your bills, you might have to downsize, you know, whatever else. Um, it's very it's very hard to get out of that way of thinking that the next thing that happens in your life the next thing that happens is going to be something negative as as well because it's what you've got clear evidence of what's just happened and i try to use <laughs> career mode and football fixtures as evidence of that you know like when you face the team if you've just beaten them you feel you're going to beat them again if you've been beaten by them you then feel negative and feel you're going to get beaten by them again so the point I'm making is that we just beat Fulham in the FA Cup we're about to take them on the Premier League and I feel confident I'm going to beat them again and I try to link that in to our talk about mental health I think my friend probably thought I was absolutely mental but um, even so it was a really interesting conversation conversation I just I I thought it was so funny you know I just I started thinking about it in terms of FIFA career mode and, and football I don't know what she thought of me at the end of the conversation but even so something interesting I want to start off with today anyway uh, yeah we beat Fulham in the first game of today's episode uh, that was through the fifth round of the FA Cup buzzing with that we'll see the draw uh, in the very next episode that progress continues into the last 16 now and uh, on deadline day now this was really interesting man I gotta say I wasn't planning to do this but 
I decided to do it in the end. Now, we had a bid from Burnley for James Tompkins, our veteran centre-half. And I said in Season 1 I wasn't going to sell that many players, um, you know, only one or two here or there. And I wanted them to go to realistic destinations. James Tompkins, you would have seen during the season, had bids from, I think it was Trabzonspor and Espanyol, two um, foreign clubs who, let's be honest, I just can't see him going to in real life. However, Burnley makes a lot of sense. Your James Tarkowskis, your Ben Mees, uh, you know, Nathan Collins, they like their British centre arse, Burnley. You know, they are a very heavy British, and in the case of Nathan Collins, an Irish team as well. Um, they, they like to stick quite close to home and also experienced defenders as well, like in the case of, of Ben Mee, uh, for example, as well. Uh, although, of course, now he's just gone and signed for Brentford on a free transfer. Uh, so I thought James Tompkins was quite a realistic destination uh, for him to go to Burnley. The deal fell through due to uh, wage problems. Having said that, Tompkins is not going to get a new contract here at Crystal Palace after this year falls, uh, falls to its end. Uh, he'll have one more year, but I'll look to sell him in the summer. So with Tompkins not getting any game time, he's like fifth choice centre half here. Going to Burnley, now a championship side, under Vincent Company, former centre half himself of all those years at Man City, of course, made a lot of sense. So because Burnley are interested in him, I decided to give him to Burnley, even though the initial transfer fell through, because they were interested, they'd already shown signs they wanted him, so that was realistic, and also packaged him, along with some money, in a deal for Dwight McNeil. Yes, Dwight McNeil, the ex-Manchester United Academy uh, youth graduate, Obviously, he made a name for himself under uh, Sean Dyche at Burnley, dropping to the championship uh, for this upcoming season. But, you know, Dwight McNeil, he's he's definitely a player who I think has got more than enough quality to get poached back in to the Premier League. There's several players that are interested. Crystal Palace, ha sorry, several teams have been interested. Uh, several teams, Aston Villa, Everton, Newcastle and Crystal Palace have had slight rumours. So I think Everton are the most likely destination at this point in time. It could, of course, go to Aston Villa or Newcastle anyone really but Dwight McNeil had been linked with Crystal Palace he is a player that can play on the wing he is a player that hang, uh, can play through the middle East. I think he played a game or two under uh, Mike Jackson uh, last year when Jackson came in as the interim coach takeover from Sean Dyche so McNeil can for it play through the middle but normally he's naturally on that left hand side for Burnley he's a player with tremendous technical ability what he lacks up for in pace he makes up for in terms of his creativity with that left boot of his. We all know Dwight McNeil, one of his Achilles heels is the fact he is quite a one-sided player. I should say one-footed player even. He's not got the best of right foots on him, but he's got a great left foot. What is it about Premier League players with left foots, many of which aren't quite as good with the right. I mean, Chris Brunt, for example, one name that springs to mind, Morton Gounce, Pedersen, maybe, I don't know. Dwight McNeil seems to be one of those players, you know, one of a left foot, less said about the right, the better. But even so, he signed McNeil in the end. I didn't think it was too unrealistic there. He's in the second tier right now, but he's more than good enough to be in the Premier League. Come on, man. He's now 70 rate, uh, 78 rated in the game in his early to mid-20s. Yeah, he's got the ability, no doubt about that, to be playing top-tier football. He has been linked with a return to the Premier League in this summer window. Several teams, Everton, Aston Villa, for example, have shown interest in McNeil. And there's no reason why I couldn't see him going to Crystal Palace as well. Once again, reasonably realistic transfer there. At least I would certainly say so. Very happy with that one there. Gives us a bit more squad depth and more quality on the bench as well. And he's still going to get better at 78 rated as well. So, yeah, buzzing without signing right there. I think that's a really good pickup. And again, James Tompkins. Could you see him at Trabzonspor? Don't think so. Could you see him at Burnley? Absolutely. So that made total sense, in my opinion. I love how he spent every single penny as well. Practically every... Every single penny spent on Dwight McNeil there. You love to see it. Even so, for the following game of today's episode, he wouldn't make his debut in this one, but it was going to be a repeat of the previous fixture. Yes, Fulham away at Craven Cottage. And because we just beat them in the FA Cup fourth round, you saw the tie drawn for the fifth round there. I said it came in the next episode. Sorry, it came in there uh, before the uh, second game. Today's episode against Fulham here. We've got Wolves away at Molyneux. Very tough trip there to Molyneux. Uh, Saying on Bruno Lager's side away from from home but before we get there it is going to need a return to the Premier League Fulham away Craven Cottage just beat them here a few days ago in the FA Cup so what I was talking about today's episode start of the episode about you know referencing if you just experience something positive the likely it is based on what you've just experienced what's fresh in your mind you feel you're going to get something more positive in the future take on Fulham we're tuning up inside the first half now and I wasn't one bit surprised because again it, it just seems to be that way doesn't it you know it's, it's the same in life as it 
often is in sports as well. When you've beaten a team, you feel like you can beat that same team again if it comes quickly, if that second game comes quickly because you've got that previous proof evidence something good just happened you just beat them you just got the victory against them so you've got proof registered proof registered evidence that you can beat this team therefore you feel like you can beat them again so heading into the second game felt very confident indeed with two up fulham did get some chances in the second half to be fair but it's trying to stave off relegation this season fulham obviously the fans are dying for stability now over the past few years they've been a yo-yo team promoted relegated promoted relegated now promoted again five straight seasons of up down up down up down as t pain might say um you know fulham desperate to get themselves premier league stability for the following season or right? upcoming season should say under marco silva same happening in the game as well right now uh, trying to stave off the bottom three we put the sword to them in this game once again though just to come apart in the FA Cup to make it through to the fifth round and then we're back here once again and get the win again yep it's just one of those things it's like life and football as well previous experience very recently fresh in your mind you feel like the same thing is going to repeat exactly what happened here 3-1 victory away at Craven Cottage there they scored a consolation goal did not matter we get the win and a big one as well we are still chasing a European place. I've got to say, we've <laughs> we've been locked in 11th for practically the entire season so far. With 14 games to go, trying to gather some momentum, we still are in 11th, but we're only three points off Manchester City and five off Manchester United in 7th as well. 14 games to go. We get a good run between February to April. European football is definitely an outside possibility. But that will end today's episode of the Realistic Summer Karima, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. If you haven't, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I hope you didn't mind my philosophical chat today. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic Summer Career Mode. Lesser that, please, Doxy Boy. Very soon.